Pocket with Friday Facts number uh, 391. Uh, the 2023. What? 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 You were confused. So I said 391. Also, hi. Hi. Quality mojo. Hi. So I have my recap here for 2023. I also have my recapping uh, interrupting um, friend here. Mojo, how you doing, mate? Hello. Back here for the for the end of the year. The end of the finale, the final 2023. Uh, and the fireworks to begin, right? Yes. Okay, so... Begin in 24 hours. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's the 30th actually. here. Um, although he can't count. There's a whole other day after this one. Anyway, uh, we have uh, the Friday Facts. Uh, so this is all about the mod portal. Which I honestly didn't expect, but I thought probably should have expected because they sort of throw that in every year or so. Um, so at the end of 23, 23, uh, 2023, yep, surprise, surprise, we're still counting mod downloads. Whilst most of these downloads are via the built-in mod manager, some of you like to automate your factory installs with download scripts or Docker containers. Some of them crash when updating their mods and restart and download all the mods again, crash and restart and after a short while. Wow, it's very unlikely. Very likely Factorio or Soda auth server starts ignoring the download script so maybe this festive season it's time for you to remember your poor mini pc sitting in a forgotten closet mindlessly downloading power armor mark 3 over and over i don't know who makes power armor mark 3 but god they've been picked on this this particular friday facts yeah do you want know to be funny if it was right rail guard uh, it would be funny okay in 2023 uh, we had a whole lot of engineers downloading a whole lot of mods like a lot of mods um, also, that is the current player base, like the per year player base for Factorio. That's a very, very large player base. It's also, I forgot to mute Bison Sphere again. Uh, we're just going to mute that part way through the Friday Facts. It's fine because this is recorded live whilst I'm streaming over at Twitch. Uh, so, yes, uh, we had a whole lot of engineers downloading a whole lot of mods. And I actually looked up on the Steam DB the numbers for Factorio, and we already know that the, the they've said they've sold three or four million copies in a previous Friday fax. So there's still 600, almost 700,000 players every year. And they're downloading mods. They're just the ones playing yes. mods. This is just the ones playing mods, not counting the people who never touch it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they also had 2,000 two, uh, 2, new mods and um, a whole lot of mod updates. And there are 13, well, 1,300 are active mod creators supported by 105 collaborators. Most collaborators are also a mod creator of some sort, uh, but not all of them are, not all of them are, uh, but that is a very large modding community. Uh, and you can see a personal recap here, and my personal recap says that I um, play far too many mods, far too many mods. Um, yeah, 100... It says I say play too few. What, what was your number? Uh, like 27. Yeah. It wasn't very high. Yeah, 164. Uh, I, I still play community maps uh, as often. 59. As, uh, off, uh, 59, that's not too bad. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Additional pace settings get some love. It's in the in the highlights. It's in the highlights. Uh, my highlights are the top three uh, normally installed on every single community map uh, that I play because I still try and do community maps as often as I can. Uh, and then the last two are because of uh, C block. And it's probably these two just happen to have the most updates. That's what I would guess. Um, yes. Uh, and I, I have 11 downloads for mods created by me. I have no idea. It turns out I have mods. Um, yeah, only 11. I have 754. Well, you're obviously way more popular than I am. I, don't even, I didn't even know I had a mod. I mean, it's, I don't know what's being downloaded, but it's there. <laughs> Same here. I, I, it's probably something that I've just changed the version file, so it works. I didn't have to do any coding, probably. Probably, but no guarantees. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so last year, we looked at how many different mods people usually download for this year. I'd like to show you a bit about the diversity of mod updates this year. The first chart shows the different categories of mods released in 2023. The second chart shows all the 2023 player downloads grouped by mod category. It confirms that the cliche that people are only here for the content. I should have prepared these charts for mod tags instead. So we have a, a large amount of tweaks, a, a very large amount of content. Utility mods, not so much. And then no category, mod packs, localization, overhauls, and scenarios, get, uh, whatever's left. And the downloads per category is pretty much the same. 
And the only thing... I love that, yep. that um, no category is not, uh, not any significant slice of the pie in both... Because the, uh, the, the categories for factorial mods are pretty useless. Anytime I've gone looking for something yeah. and I've actually gone, it should be in that category. It's never in that category. Uh, it's always filed in the wrong category. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing that my, my biggest takeaway from this was localization is actually a very, very small percentage. Um, there are lots of games, other games I play that I've gone and installed mods for. And I know for Dyson Sphere... Um, it's localized in English and Chinese, but like Japanese is like the top five, one of the top five uh, mods for it because it's not localized to Japanese at all. Um, Japanese localization in general is a very big, is very popular. Yeah, I, look, it comes it, up a lot. It, it, it is, but it's one of those ones that, you know, I, it's in early access, so okay, there's no localization yet, but it's one of the things like Factorio devs have put in a lot of effort localizing into a lot of languages, and the fact that yeah. 2% is still localizations, I'm wondering if they're going to do more localization for version 1.2, 2.0, DLC, slash expansion. Yeah, try and nut out those last couple of languages. So yes. Um, and then we come into um, Mod Portal Changelog 2023. So... This year, we continue our quest of improving discoverability. First off, we add an auto-magical highlights page, which I've never, ever looked at. Each week, it tries to be smart never about picking... What? Never looked at either? Yep. Uh, it uh, tries to be interested in picking a selection of mods. Uh, it works okay, but it's still in the experimental stage. We haven't decided where to take it next. Uh, a bit later, we work the mod portal, and we launch the explore page. It provides a fast search-as-you-type experience with uh, face... Faceting? Faceting? Um, which I have used, because it comes up by default. Uh, and then we did some work behind the scenes. So when images started deleting images, Sansa Q built in a system which automatically rehosts external images post on mod pages or uh, mod pages or discussions, thus preserving old screen sh shots and improving load times, which is something I had no idea. Like we all knew images deleted everything um, because they could and because they had to, uh, but I had no idea that they took the effort to rehost everything. I know lots of other forums that had post going back years never bothered to do anything about it um and they changed the mod storage from a sftp based solution to an s3 like object storage whatever the hell that means um uh, it, may, it means instead of well it's actually kind of amazing to see sftp come up because that's really slow and then it goes to a s3 like as aws like okay but they say aws like which means it probably isn't or they say S3 like, which means it's not actually AWS. It just it's means that telling me. uploads should work more reliably. Because reliably, I know yes. even when I was updating mods a while back, getting an upload to work was pain. Right? And that, yeah, that would be the SFTP thing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that would have been... Well, it, it's, it's, it's based... For me, it was based on... Probably I was uploading something else at the same time. And uh, being in Australia, our ping time to everywhere is horrible. Um... So, yes. Uh, so then, Raugat, uh did some mod manager improvements. So, mod is an integral part of Factorio, and we put tremendous effort in providing a good mod management experience. However, 30 party mods have always been secondary to base game work. So, whilst the experience is good, it's not great. And there are many points of friction that, I ha that have remained unsolved. Starting in 2.0, we'll ship the game with multiple built in mods. Like, quality is a built in mod. What was the other one? Oh, uh, rail bridges. Rail bridges. Yep, and there was a third one, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think the whole space age thing is also technically a mod. Yes, yeah, technically space age, it's in and of itself, is a mod. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's many things that have been unresolved. So starting 2.0, we'll ship the game with multiple built-in mods. So the mod manager and dependency manager now fallen under base game experience umbrella. Due to my extensive modding experience, when we go look at that, uh, he's the maker of Crestorio 2. Which is one of those mods that just um, super popular, super super popular. Um, so yes, there's a personal interest in improving and managing both the uh, for both users and modders. So I'm intimately familiar with the pain points of the current system. I created a laundry list for my biggest wishes and frustrations. Took it upon myself to begin solving them. So we have mod dependency errors. Uh, Pitch this: you just configured your mod list for a new playthrough of Crestoria 2 and start a new game. Unbeknownst to you, you accidentally enabled Power Armor Mark 3 mod, which Crestoria has marked incompatible. Takes an hour into the playthrough before you realize the Crestoria content uh, two uh, Crestoria two content is missing. Now you have to throw out the save and start over from scratch. 
This situation I've perfectly experienced a number of times, both as a player and a mod author in 1.1. The game does not inform you when a conflict occurs, and instead it just silently loads the mods and carries on. That's great. It's great that uh, people that don't know that they have a problem, and it just works. It's just a work system. It's a perfect system, right? I mean, it does highlight the mod in red. It still lets you do it all. Uh, only if you physically go through every mod yeah, that you, you have loaded in the mod through. manager. And it if tells you, go you through and actually see it. Yeah, in big red, you know, no, we have a problem. Uh, but nobody does that. Nobody does that. Uh, so, yes, this that requires causes reading. many more mod authors to shy away from requiring dependencies altogether and use to complain when a mod has a lot of dependencies. Issues surrounding this are so uh, commonplace that Space Exploration implemented their own dependency error system that informs units as which mods are missing. So, for Factorio 2.0, it will inform you when a dependency error occurs. And now, and not allow the game to load until they resolve, which is great. Except, Factorio has a problem, and it's been a problem. It's one of the many problems it has with mods for a very long time, and that is, if you get a crashing mod or something, and you get an error when the game first boots up, you could disable just the mods that were causing the problem, or all the mods to then restart the game, to then go back into the mod manager and then fix it, or at least, or, or exit the game and go back to Explorer and fix it manually, and blah 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 blah. So they fixed that, yes. Um, so they went and changed... Into infinite starting loops. Yeah, well, we, we, we've had that happen on server. That was fun. Uh, so they added a new Manage Mod button that allows you full access to the Mod Manager GUI, including all Mod Portal, portal functionality. Uh, and you can see that in the screenshot above. And actually, my issue was I had a mod. I had a mod. I had the latest version of the mod, which had a conflict with something else on the save. So I had to wind back the mod version by one version, then it would work fine. Uh, and the catch was I couldn't inside Factorio. I had to go in, into Explorer and delete the, 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 the later version. So it had to load, load the old version, then everything worked fine. Um, so, installing mods. In 1.1, the install type of the mod manager is relatively simple. You have a list of mods, some basic sorting, filtering options, and an info pane that shows the mods. The game fetched the entire mod list and creates the table at once, leading to a noticeable performance issues and nigh unstable performance when the game is in debug mode. Yeah, the game is not designed to run in debug mode. Uh, with the advent of the new Explore tab, yeah, what mode you? Uh, well, you've never run the game in debug mode. I have, I have, I have. I have, I've is run it in debug it? mode, and I've also run it in, what's the other one? There's one for network performance. Uh, well, not true debug mode, because that's... Unless they are actually talking about the debug mode, because there is, like, they do have a separate build for debug. Uh, I, well, I've never run it in probably that debug mode, uh, because that's, you're right, there's a separate build. But there is a, there's one for testing for desyncs, which enables a whole bunch of debug options and also takes a save of the game and reloads it every tick. Which oh, is painful. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah. That that anticipation, waiting for the mod portal to 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 click. Oh yeah, the mod portal. Like like I said, being in Australia, our our ping times. It's not about speed of the internet. It is about the ping times. The ping times are bad. <coughs> cool. Coughed on that. Um. So the ping times are bad, and it means that something like loading a mod portal. Can take a while it can take a very very long time sometimes especially if i'm busy downloading uploading uh and and doing other things at the same time yeah it, really bad um so uh the set of the new workflow of searching for on the website only searching for it in game after so uh railguard railguard has done the same thing i do so i go to the web page i find the mod i want and then I'll either download it manually put it in factorio or if i'm being lazy because i can't be bothered to find the you know slash user slash random no what is it your username local factorio mods then put that folder in when i say download yes. that file i just go to factorio and search for the exact same mod and just have factorio do it uh so the problem is when you're searching on the mod portal and in game you wouldn't always find the same results uh so uh they've updated it for the new explore tab for version 2.0 so now they're identical and you have a lot of the same functionality. Like, you can actually see some of the images and get some of the details about all the different mods and blah, 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 inside the game mod manager. 
which has awesome air yeah, filtered by bookmark mods not many employed in new GUI, but it'll be there for the 2.0 release oh well okay cool so we can also get our bookmark mods cool uh which is actually Very something nice. well it's something that we started doing so because we run community maps uh we started making a what are they called a mod pack a mod pack that grabs all my mods that would run for every community map and sets all the settings, which I didn't know mod packs can do that. So I can actually set all the settings for all the different mods before then we add extra mods on top of that for whatever flavor of the month uh, mod we're currently running. Like at the moment we're doing, we're doing uh, what's left of Christmas on the crash site scenario. Um, so we've got our standard mods, plus we've got a whole lot of winter special Santa mods things installed, um, which Cogmas, actually was the Cogmas tree. The Cogmas tree, yes, we've got the Cogmas tree. Very good. Uh, we also have a bunch of other mods installed as well, uh, and many, many friends that we need to have a chat to. And um, yes, yes, that one that makes the biters explode in a mushroom cloud of spit. No and acid. No, I, I have no idea. Well, Mojo's going to send me a mod li link after after the video's done. Uh, but yes, I'm streaming that manly war cry for when you die. Oh no, God, God, no, I die far too often. I've got chat integration installed. Um, you need Manly Warcry. That, that's, oh God, what, <laughs> who's the streamer? Shred guy. Shred guy, that's it. He doesn't, he doesn't stream anymore. Um, yes, I, I, I know the one. Yeah, no, I die far too often. Um, because I've got <laughs> chat integration with the Twitch chat. You could have channel points and earn and channel points and spend them doing wonderful things like, um, pants on fire, where everybody's pants light on fire at the same time. Yeah. You're disappointing everyone by not dying like a man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, anyway, community map. Community map uh, will be uh, technically with the day the Friday Facts video comes out, it'll be tonight's stream. It'll be tonight's stream. Uh, if people want to come and join. Uh, okay. So, several considerations when trying to implement this new interface. 1.1 method of fetching the entire mod list every time was not a great solution for performance and network usage reasons and would involve re-implementing the complex search algorithms client-side and C++, lead to inevitable differences between the website search and in-game search, which would not make for a great user experience. On the other hand, implementing mod search API would ensure parity between the website and in-game search results. So they went for the API approach uh, to get the project up and running quicker, chose to implement a mock server in Go that would fetch data from the existing mod portal APIs and serve the new format, thanks to Go's built-in HTTP TTP libraries and a very easy to use JSON parsing. It only took a few hours to get the server up and running on my laptop. As I implemented the Explore GUI, I was able to freely adjust the API as needed without taking any DevOps time, which is nice. You know, we we have we have the developers working their own time rather than in um you know, rather than on uh, paid time on paid time. Yeah, to fix the mod portal, uh, allowing me make to uh, take my time doing much more needed cleanup and refactoring the mod manager GUI to make the explore tab easier to implement and pave way for much uh, for more changes in the future. Once the client side implementation was complete, uh, it was up to Vizenz to implement the real API. Thanks to the robustness of the mock server, only a few issues found during the testing against the real APIs and merging the feature went relatively smoothly. So, future plans. I feel that these changes have been fixed in my, uh, and my largest grievances with mod management. My laundry list is far from complete, but in the interest of getting 2.0 out to you as soon as possible, majority of my plans will have to wait until later revisions. Stay tuned for more to come. Which means... As is something we've seen with Factorio. And Does that I mean that we might get it next year? Uh, what gives you that wait until the 2024 recap. Well... Get more mod portal updates. Well, that implies they have a guesstimated release time. Yeah, it means that there is a, a, an end point. Oh, no, no, no. An end point is there's always going to be an end point. But do you think yeah, they have yeah, an endpoint with a time with a time deadline? No, I don't think they do. I, I think you're getting ahead of yourself. I think you're getting ahead of yourself. Over enthusiastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but but I think I think that with with Factoria with Factoria, and I, I think this is a Coverx thing. Um, all too often we see Factorio with a we're planned for the future we put things aside for the future we put in time now 
to make stuff in the future easier and better, but we have a system that works now. I'm going to keep it like that. I'm going to release it like that and fix the other stuff in the future in the future. Um, which has led to, I think, one of being one of the problems with Factorio's very, very long uh, release or well, early access stage, where because we're in early access for what nine years or something. Yeah. Copyright fifteen to twenty three, and it got released in twenty one, and it didn't start in fifteen. It started in fourteen. Um. Well, it goes all the way back to twenty. 13 technically oh, 2012 think... was the kickstarter was it yeah well there you go uh yeah 2013 2014 was um the early versions yeah yeah it was like nine years worth of early access and it was it was like spidertron they had spidertron for 1.1.0 but they knew it was missing a lot of features and they came out in 1.1 thankfully but, you know, we were good enough, close enough, you know, we decided to release, and then, what they do? They move the release date because of Cyberpunk coming out, and then they move the release date again? Because Cyberpunk was some other game was coming out? And then ended up releasing at the same time as Cyberpunk because Cyberpunk got delayed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I think they did that for the memes, though. I don't think they actually did intend that. <sighs> They set a release date, and then they stuck with it, even though they moved it back two weeks to avoid something. And then that happened to be the week Cyberpunk was going to come out. Or they moved it back a couple of weeks to avoid something like Cyberpunk coming out, and then Cyberpunk got pushed back two weeks and ended up on the same same day as Factorio, or the day before, the day after, whatever it happens to be. I know releasing a game on Steam is very important, Okay, your release date is actually very, very important to the success of a game. Um, I've been talking to a lot of devs over the last couple of years, and your release date is something that can make or break a game. So I understand why they did it, but yeah, they got screwed in the end anyway. Um, and they could have just delayed a week by, don't announce yeah. a release date. That's generally what I'd recommend. You know, by all means, talk to content creators, have embargoes, all that sort of stuff, set a release date for them. They, this is the release date. We're not talking about it. That That is officially the release date. And then don't tell anybody else until 24 hours beforehand. Because release dates can just slip very quickly, very easily. Uh, and don't do what SteamWorld Build did where they had the game ready to go a month prior and then sat on it. Oh, did they actually sit on it? They sat on it for a month and then they released not the release candidate, they released the version before the release candidate. The release candidate was the one that actually came out two weeks prior to Christmas, a week prior to Christmas, with all the snow content and the Christmas theme content. That was actually the release candidate that came out, like, you know, six weeks after the final update to the previous version. Um, yeah, behind the scenes stuff. Anyway, mm. uh, so 2023 is done. Mojo, 2024, Factorio. We're expecting more Friday facts. Yeah, yes. We still have four planets we don't know about. Yes. Four planets? Three planets? Four pl four planets, I think. I don't know. Some amount of planets 15, we don't know about. Four, four planets total. Four planets four. total. So three planets we, we, we don't know about. One that we don't know all the details about. Uh, we haven't mentioned biters at all. We haven't mentioned extra vehicles. Uh, we no haven't... Brain. Huh? No word on the brain sack. No word on the brain sack, correct. Uh, we haven't mentioned uh, extra weapons, extra power armor, extra internal modules. Uh, what else hasn't been mentioned? Uh, the other science packs. Yeah, uh, well, we know they exist. We don't know what they do. Yeah, we know their color. Uh, we, we, we don't know what they do on each world. We, we don't know what the one on Volcanus does either. So um, this brings us to, uh, what are your predictions? Um, well, I, I think... I think we're really overdue for a for a biter or just general enemy update, but I have a feeling we won't unless they're doing spider specific to specific planets. I probably I won't see more for a while. I expect that. I expect we're going to have a unique a unique enemies on unique planets. Now, whether when we encounter unique enemies on unique planets and then they are ride your just like rats, just like rats, they, you know, somehow smuggle away onto your space rigs and then go back to um, the uh, our home world and um, 
start popping up in your home worlds, which I think would be an interesting dynamic. Um, yeah, that's... as soon as you discover them on on uh, the other planets, they, they start spawning in the home world. Yeah, that that'd be interesting. That'd definitely be interesting. Um, especially as there's the I'm pretty sure the flying brain brain snack uh, brain snack snack. <laughs> yes, the flying brain sack is probably gonna fly. So that could be an interesting d- uh, dilemma. Uh, if we get a water world, we could have um, swimming biters. Swimming biters could be interesting as well. Um, well, one of the planets is... Well there's, well, there's two interesting planets. One is super green with a lot of water on it uh-huh. from the icon. And the other one is a snow world. A yeah, super green one was super green one is, is the one that looks like a story. It has a story on it. It, it. It's guaranteed to have the best biters. The best oh, yeah. biters. It's guaranteed to have swimming biters and flying biters and all the biters. High-range artillery biters. All the biters. All the biters. So, Mojo, 2024. Yes. Are you predicting 52 weeks worth of Friday facts? Yes. Okay. Okay. Are you predicting that Factorio 1.2, 2.0 DLC expansion shall come out next year? I think it'll come out next year. Oh, Mojo's down for 2024. Mm. Okay. I, I, I don't think they're going to draw it down for that long. Okay. I'm putting my money on 2025. Early 2025. Uh, and with that uh, that said and done, I think we're done with the Friday Facts. I think we're done for this year. I think I'll see you next year. We'll see whether we get 252 Friday Facts. I we'll see whether... We'll see whether... next year. Yeah, well, well I'll, I'll probably see you next year, mate. <laughs> it's two days away. <sighs> but, but... We're going to have to see what happens. Uh, I, I, I'm excited. I'm curious. Uh, next year release. Mojo's going to money next year. I've got my money the year after. Yeah, we'll have to see. Anyway, we're going to leave this video here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next year. All right, bye. Bye-bye.